Located in the southeast of Austria, you find the second biggest city, Graz. From here on, you find many international trains. I arrived here with a Eurocity train that came from Trieste in Italy, and now I'll be traveling back towards Slovenia again on board of a regional train that is bound for Maribor, what is the second biggest city of Slovenia. What it's like to travel on board of these regional trains, we're all about to find out in this video. So join me on board of these trains between Graz in Austria and Maribor in Slovenia, what is the second city of Slovenia. For now, let's get this video on the track and let's roll the intro. The day before I arrived in Graz with a Eurocity train that for a part started in Trieste in Italy and in the Ljubljana, the capital of Slovenia, more coaches were attached to this. And now I'm traveling back to Slovenia again, to Maribor to be exactly. But before we do this, let's discover the railway station of Graz. Around the railway station there are many hotels and obviously also lots of commercial areas. Right at the front of the railway station, right under the square, you find the tramways of Graz. These bring you to many places in the city, but also you find many buses that do depart at the front of the railway station at the bus stop. There's an underground passage to some areas as well, but when I filmed this here on an early Sunday morning, this was still closed. This here is the main concourse of Graz Hauptbahnhof or Graz Central Railway Station. Over here you find direct access to the tracks and there are clear departure screens. However, before we go there, let's discover a little bit more of what you can find over here. Because if you'd move to both sides, you find tons of shops, but also railway related services and information points. For example, this information point about the Koranbahn. This is a new railway line that will reduce the travel time between Graz and Klagenfurt, what is another big city in Austria, big time. And of course you find tons of shops, for example this supermarket which was opened also early Sunday morning, what is perfect so I can buy some stuff for my journey. Even though the train that I had didn't have a dining car, in Maribor you obviously also find shops. Something else at the front of the railway station is obviously you find a taxi stand, more spots where you can park a bike, a pick up and drop or something for railway passengers by car, well you name it the usual stuff. From this point at the front of the railway station, you also find at several points direct access to track number one. Since 2010, the station has been adapted for its new role as an international transport hub. And from here you find so many international trains. And this also means there's a lounge, although it was closed when I was here relatively early on Sunday morning. But lounge access is in general pretty good. If you're traveling with an interrail for example, you can also go to the lounge as long as you have a first class ticket. From here on you find a lot of international trains. At the moment I was here I noticed trains to the Czech Republic, Hungary, Switzerland, Italy and obviously Slovenia. And by the way the train to Italy from here will travel via Slovenia as well. And apart from that, you find many trains to all over Austria, obviously. This railway station is not too big, but it's definitely not small. You find tons of facilities and directions have been marked crystal clear. I hope you like this video so far. If you do so, or if it's a helpful video to you, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. If you have any questions or even if you just want to say hello, some comments, some feedback, please let me know in the comments. Um, and if you'd like to see more trip reports about like this, this channel is mainly focusing on long distance and international traveling to show you what it's like to travel on a more sustainable way of transportation, then hit the subscribe button if you haven't done this already. For now, let's continue with this video. Also at the platform, there are clear screens with information about departing trains. And even though I didn't put it that well on camera, at the platform there are lots of places where you can wait also inside for cold days. However, this here, this is what this entire trip report is about, because this is our train that will take us to Maribor in Slovenia. This train of the Slovenian state-owned railway companies is a Stadler Flirt that do have a top speed of 160 km per hour. These specific trains 
are suitable to operate on the railroads in obviously Slovenia and Austria, but also Croatia. At the moment of recording, this line has just been launched, what is early April 2024. So at this moment, there are not that frequent services. However, eventually there should be hourly regional trains between Graz and Maribor. One of these trains per day must also continue their way to Ljubljana, the capital of Slovenia. Actually, these trains do have a faster travel time than the Eurocity trains. The direct train between Graz and Ljubljana only needs about 3 hours, while the Eurocity train needs 3 hours and 22 minutes. Between Graz and Maribor it's a little bit faster. There, these trains only need 55 minutes, while the Eurocity trains need 1 hour and 2 minutes. That's not a big difference though. I think it's not that much about the travel time, but I think frequency is really important if you want to let people travel more by train. And even though not all of these trains do go straight to Ljubljana, in Maribor you can connect on intercity trains within Slovenia that do also have a faster travel time, because you find some Pendolino trains. There will be a trip report coming up on those trains as well, so stay tuned on this channel. For now let's take a closer look at the interior of these trains. As you maybe already noticed when I filmed the exterior of the train, icons do indicate what facilities can be found where. Well, these trains are not super wow in terms of facilities, but obviously there's a special area if you're driving with a bike. Also, for people with mobility problems, so basically traveling in a wheelchair or, well, with some extra supports, you will find a special area for people who need this. And close to this point, there's also the accessible toilet. Over here you can see the wheelchair area, what is really spacious to be honest. Since no train tour is complete without doing a toilet review, this here is the bigger accessible toilet and this can also be used as a diaper changing facility if you're traveling with a little baby. Well, I don't know what else I should say about the toilet, so let's continue with the train tour. The biggest part of this train is second class. You find the seat numbers right at the side of the seats and screens at the ceiling do indicate route information and will also display the carriage numbers. When I looked up the information for this train in the Interrail app, it seemed like I could reserve a seat. However, at the moment I tried to do this via the website of the ÖBB, what is the Austrian state-owned railway company, who is responsible for the Austrian section of the route, it didn't seem to be possible. Oh, I don't know if it's possible to reserve a seat, but it's not a long journey anyway. Most seats in the second class do come in a long distance bus seat composition or an airline style composition. The legroom is really generous, although I found the seats a little bit up straight to be honest and a little bit hard. However, most people travel with these trains on shorter distances only. There are also some bay seats, so seats facing each other. And for all seats in the second class, you find a power socket between the seats. These trains are more like commuter trains than real long distance trains. And for that reason, you won't find dedicated luggage racks in the compartments. However, you find the overhead luggage racks everywhere throughout the second class. Between the second and the first class, there's a smaller non-accessible toilet and opposite from the toilet, there is a kind of room for the railway staff. Litter bins you can also use to recycle your waste or located near the entrance doors of these trains. For now let's discover the first class and the first class is not that big to be honest. You will only find 12 seats in first class and this is a little bit higher so it's not accessible. Therefore the overhead luggage racks cannot handle that much but you find some extra space for luggage at the beginning of the first class compartment. If I mention the extra facilities for first class, it sounds like it's a lot of difference, but actually it's not. It's not that much better as second class. However, you will find apart from one power socket per two chairs, also one USB socket, and the seats are slightly reclinable, although it's very minimum and you don't even notice a difference that much. What I like most is that you have these seats that face each other with a bigger table in between and you can make it slightly bigger. And something I missed in the second class was having these tables in the seat in front of you in the airline style seats. 
but these tables are so tiny, it doesn't add up that much extra value. And reading lights, well, I personally never use them. You won't find these in the second class. At last, free Wi-Fi is available, although I didn't use it. I really think this is a great new connection, and Slovenia is really investing a lot in their railroad network. Especially the main lines that are very important for international connections, because Slovenia is a country where you find lots of trains just running through, will be improved a lot. This is also something you can see if I show you the views from the train along this route. And that's exactly what I will do for now. Welcome to Maribor here in Slovenia. Once again, I really hope you liked this video or this has been a helpful video to you. If so, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that and this helps to influence the algorithm. And if you made it all the way up to this point and you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you really might consider to subscribe. This channel is mainly focusing on long distance and cross-bordering travel to show you what it's like to travel on a more sustainable way of transportation. The international is mainly because, well, traveling across the border might be a little bit of a challenge every now and then, and there are a lot of things that need to be improved in Europe as well. However, before we really end up this video, one last thing. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it or this has been helpful for you. If you are interested in other trip reports, of course you can find them on this channel or you can subscribe if you haven't done this already to see the newest trip reports coming up. But something else in the description of this video, you find a link to a map where you find all videos as well.